In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the pointiness value in Blender. Now, before we start, I just want to mention that this doesn't work in the Eevee render engine. If I change this to Eevee, you can see that unfortunately you aren't able to actually see this pointiness value in Eevee. Possibly in the future, this might become something that will work in Eevee. Hopefully it will, but for now it will only work in cycles. So I'm just going to delete these nodes and I'll show you how it works. So I just added these three basic objects here and I just added a basic material on them. And then I also added an HDRI to get some very realistic lighting. So in cycles, if you press shift A in the materials and you search for the geometry node, you can add this geometry node in right here. Now I have the node wrangler add on turned on. If you don't have that enabled, uh, you can just click on edit and go to the preferences. And then right over here on the add-ons, you can just start to type in node, and then you can just turn on this node wrangler add-on. It's a really useful add-on when you're using any types of nodes. I'm going to close the user preferences. So now that I have that add-on turned on, I can press control and shift and click on a node, and that's going to preview what you clicked on. So this geometry node, it has a bunch of different things here. If I just continue to hold the control and shift key and click, I can just click all the way down, and I want to go down to this pointiness value right here. Now, if you zoom in, it is subtle and kind of hard to see, but if you zoom way in here, you can see what it's doing. So what it's doing is it's making the crevices darker and then the parts that kind of come out of the mesh, it's making that lighter. So it is a little bit hard to see. We will sharpen that up so you can see it better, but you can see like up here on the top of the ear, it's light. And then right here in the crevice of the ear, it's darker. So to be able to see this better, you can press shift A and you can search for a color ramp node. I'm just going to drop the color ramp node right here and then just control shift and click on it. Now, if you start to drag these two tabs towards each other, it's going to make it more and more contrasty. And now you can really start to see what this pointiness value is doing. So as I said, it takes the little crevices and makes that darker. And then like right here, the outer parts of the mesh, it makes that lighter. And this value is super useful for so many things. I'll show you some different uses for it. So first, I'm just going to take the color and plug that into the base color. And I can now control shift and click on this and you can basically see what it's doing. So it almost gives it kind of like a dirty or worn look. And it's really great for making things look more photorealistic because, you know, kind of in the crevices is probably where like little bits of grunge and dirt are going to appear. So you could do that. Um, you could also like play around with the colors. So maybe I want to make this blue or something like that. And it makes the objects look a lot more interesting and very cool. Now, something else you could also do with this is you could plug this value into the roughness. So if I take this color, I'm going to plug it into the roughness and then just unplug it from the base color. If I zoom over here, I can now control shift and click on this to preview it. Now this here, I'm just going to make it white. So I'm going to click on the RGB and drag these all up to white. And then I can just start to drag them really, really close to each other. So we're basically using this as the texture to tell it where it's going to be more rough and where it's going to be more shiny. So if I control shift and click on this, now you can see the darker parts, it's going to be more shiny, and then the lighter parts, it's going to be less shiny. Now, in this case, that doesn't really make sense, because if you think of maybe like a teapot or a glass or really any object, the edges oftentimes can be worn away. So if you just think about some old object, maybe like, you know, a water bottle or something like that, if it's really old, the edges of it are probably going to be worn away, especially maybe like a painted metal object, something like that. So you could use this to give it even more photorealism and make it look really cool. So we just need to switch these values. So I'm just going to drag this one over here and then drag this one over here. And there we go. So you can see that now, like the edges of the monkey, if this were like maybe a metal monkey head or something, I could actually turn the metallic all the way up so that you can see that maybe just make this a little bit lighter. So now it's like a metal monkey head. And you can see that the edges here, they're more shiny, maybe they've been like kind of rubbed away. And then the other parts are just the regular metal roughness. And then if you wanted to, you could just plug this same thing into the base color, and then you'd probably want to change the colors. So you could just press shift A and search for another color ramp, drop that in here. And then I can hold down the control and shift key and click on this to preview it. And then let's just say maybe this is like a blue metal. So I'm just going to make it like a blue color something like that, like a blue plastic or metal or something. And then those parts that are kind of rubbed away, maybe they're like a shiny white. So I'm going to turn them white and then maybe just turn it slightly yellow. And then you can see that it's mostly yellow and I want it to be mostly blue. So I can just drag this color 
just drag it out and you can see that now it kind of looks like just some of the edges like for instance on this cup or this teacup or something just the edges are being rubbed away kind of like it's been old and the color on the outer parts of the cup maybe have been rubbed away and so yeah it gives a really cool effect and it looks very shiny there as well which is really cool maybe i'll just turn this metallic down so that it's more of like a plastic color but you can see this pointiness value is really helpful it can be really useful for so many different things and as I said at the starting of the video, you could also use this to like put some dirt or grunge or something. So if you wanted to make like two different materials, like for instance, I could duplicate this principle and then I could just make this like it may be a dark brown color. You could like plug up maybe dirt textures or grunge textures. Then what you could do is you could mix these two together. So if you want the cup to have some like dirt on it, you could press shift A and you could search for a mix shader we'll just drop that in there and then we'll plug this up here and then what you could do is you could use this pointiness value as the factor to tell it where it's going to be like the dirt and grunge and where it's going to be the cup material so i'm just going to delete this and i will delete this as well maybe i'll just make the cup material like a blue color so we have this like blue plastic cup material and then we have the dirt here so you can see it's not really doing anything yet and that is because the pointiness value on default if i just control shift and click you can see it's very subtle so again if you just want to add like a color ramp shift a add a color ramp drop it in here you could start to turn this up and then it's going to be the factor for where the dirt is going to be and then where the rest of it's going to be so it's probably going to look better on this monkey because the monkey has more interesting shapes and then the plastic and the dirt i just need to swap these and you can see that now kind of in the crevices it kind of gives that darker color kind of like dirt or grunge or something maybe it's kind of old and then there is like the plastic blue color so there we go, that is the basics of how to use Blender's pointiness value. As you can see, this pointiness value is quite useful and you can do a lot of really cool things with it. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you in a future video.